We're coming to you live. Well, not so live by the time you're watching this, but <laughs> Starship Theater inside of the Electric Starship Arcade in Haltom City, Texas, in front of a dead cardboard audience right now. So if you don't know, we do have cardboard cutouts we usually have on the stage in there off the right there so they're all staring at me uh elf kiss and uh willy wonka a matter of fact so and elvira we can't forget her uh, don't forget bruce lee He's um join i am mike woods i'm uh you're one of your hosts here but we do have two other glorious hosts to my right and left mike murray i'm uh from the geek pub and the time rift arcade and Roman Saldivar, friend and families of, of everyone here. I Love thought it. your last name was Honcho. <laughs> uh, that's only on the weekends. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> you know, well, there's been more than once I've tried to look you up on Facebook and yeah. could not find you because I forgot your name was different. Uh, he goes by, uh, yeah, should I give your alias? Mike Honcho. Mike Honcho. <laughs> if you haven't seen Talladega Nights, watch that movie. First of all, you have not lived until you watch Talladega Nights. But uh, he goes by the name Mike Honcho. Show. So anyway, today we're going to talk about arcades because this is the Starship Rift Arcade Podcast. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's a mouthful, even though we tried to shorten it about three times. Starship <laughs> Rift Arcade Podcast is where we're at today. And this is episode number two. Number two. And today, let's talk about Arcades, uh, and specifically arcade machines. We've had a discussion on what an arcade is. If you've missed that, that's episode one. But the machine, the coin-operated device with the video game or Maybe whatnot. Coin Maybe coin, not in this case. <laughs> we have tape over our coin slots here. But uh, that arcade machine. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, if I heard that someone outside of a business had an arcade machine, it blew my mind. And there was one guy, you know, like, I don't know if y'all had this guy in your neighborhood, but he had one in his garage. Yep. Oh, yeah. It was a Phoenix, actually, the um, Century Phoenix, which if you haven't played this game, you're a little kind of bird ship thing at the bottom and bigger bird things you shoot at them. Uh, and but and it had a kind of a boss level. That I don't remember a whole lot of games having a boss level from back then. But he had a Phoenix in his garage, and I was mesmerized. I couldn't believe that uh, someone that wasn't a business, uh, you know, a, a gas station or a, a tilt or, or a putt putt, then an arcade machine in their house in their garage. So uh, where do we get these things? Where do you get it? Is, is a question. That may be a question you're asking. Uh, and it may be because you want to have the ultimate retro man cave or she shed uh, for you <laughs> oh, ladies yeah. listening. Uh, or um, you may want to start up an arcade, right? And uh, you need some retro because we talked about it. You want to have some retro games in there because that's what creates the vibe and gets people coming the door. So where do you get them? Uh, and, and we have some great examples here because I've started an arcade. Mike's also starting an arcade. He's in the process. And this young man has some games at his house. I do. So uh, let's talk about it a little bit, Mike. And those are technically all arcades. They are They're arcades. All it's just a arcade. home arcade. Yep. A home arcade. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, do you have one-ups? Is that what you have, Roman? No. Oh! Not Come on, man. Those are cool. I, I'm a little bit on the, uh, the, the, the Asian side. I've got some candy cabs. Oh, he's got an Asian fetish, folks. Watch out for this guy. <laughs> oh, no. And, uh, and for the U.S. side, I, I'm, I'm a big Neo Geo fan. So ah, I do love side. the Neo Geo. SNK. Yep. How about you, Mike Murray? Uh, at home? <laughs> do you have any arcades at home? <laughs> uh, yeah. You do? Yeah. I'm, uh, so uh, I've got arcades coming out of my ears. Like, yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> when you're, uh, in case you are ever wanting to have a, 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 a location uh, that has arcades in it, before you actually have the location, you have to collect the games. And if you don't have a place to put them, they're everywhere. Uh, yeah. Even if you have a place to put them, they're going to be everywhere. So I have a warehouse in Watauga that's completely full. I have two storage units that are completely full and a garage that's completely full. And now, and my, much to my wife's, <laughs> she's not happy about it. Now they're going inside the house. Oh, yeah. That's the old, uh, where they start drawing the line on yeah. you a little bit. Like, okay, it can be in there, but it can't go in the living room. It's like, come on, hey, it's right. a cocktail table. It can be our end table in our there bedroom. Why not? Oh yeah, why not? Yeah. How about so. you, Roman? So uh, mine's supposed to be in one room. Unfortunately, it's kind of <laughs> migrated. To uh oh. Um, but uh, really, it's it's one room that I have. Uh, I've got about three or four in there right now. Um, that's pretty much my limit. But you know, it's theoretical limit. <laughs> theoretical limit. These limits are meant to be broken and stretched, folks. I want to hear 
from the reverse gender here on the in the comments. I want to hear about the lady that's an arcade collector and the man is like, hey, honey, there's just way too many arcades yeah, in here. Yeah. I want to know about this couple because I know if I'm on this end of the spectrum, there's got to be someone on that Absolutely. end. So um, speaking of spectrums, Mike, tell us about, <laughs> tell us, uh, <laughs> where do you get these arcade machines from? Well, after I had my test. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's 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 that's such a great topic, and and I, when I went into this, when I first met you, I had <laughs> no idea. He thought you just went to arcades or us and yeah, just picked them yeah. all up. I had no idea the process that would be involved in in building an arcade and collecting all these machines because they come in so many different varied forms. Like some of them are just ready to go on the floor. Some of them are like piles of crap that oh, I couldn't even believe points. was, was going to be an arcade. Like what? Sure. You can restore that? Like right. it's even possible? And I it, look, I've got a workshop and I build stuff all the time. And some of them that you picked out. I amazing like, workshop and like, amazing stuff. <laughs> I was like, there's no way this is going to ever go on the floor. And sure enough, it looks brand new again when we're done. But um, and then, you know, so I just kind of thought, oh, you just have to know people that have them or you just have to buy them off Facebook Marketplace. And then Mike introduced me to this thing called the auction. And oh, so, the arcade auction. Yeah, so bought a bunch of arcades. Roman, you've auction. been to the arcade auction yeah. with me and Mike, haven't you? I, I have. They're, they're very unique. Everyone, has, Everyone is different, different, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. so there's some you got to be very patient uh, <laughs> when they say they start at three, you know, or 10. Maybe it's two, or maybe four. it is three. <laughs> Absolutely, so, mm -hmm. some of them are, are online. Uh, a lot of the ones in, in person, you get to check out what you're going to get. So, yeah, there's a lot of versatility out there, but um, good things to look into. But. So, when we think of auctions, the general public, the first thing's going to probably pop into their head is. One of two things. One, eBay, because that's the auction site that we've all been, you know, accustomed to knowing what is for quite a while now since, you know, the earlier days of Internet. Yeah. Uh, we've had eBay auction site, and that is a great place for finding parts. I, I'd say great. It, it is a place you can occasionally find maybe a, uh, a circuit board, a printed circuit board, a PCB. Um, but the auctions we're talking about and the other way you would think it was the guy was like, eh, you know, the guy is talking really fast <laughs> like this and, uh, I can't do it very well, but you understand what I'm talking about. Absolutely. So I was talking to my father-in-law about this and he thought, cause he was, he's a farmer. Sure. He thought it was just like the auctions at farms where you run the goats across the stage ah, and everybody yeah. just bids on them. Like, or cars, you know, cars, cars yeah, across yeah. the stage. Yeah. So the difference in this, you know, I'll paint the picture for you. So in a, a typical, like a car auction when they're on the line uh, and you're bidding like you're a used car director and you've got to buy cars for the the shop they're, they're running them in front of you uh, and you're kind of standing in one place kind of throwing your hands up and it's the same thing if you're buying old artwork at least for, I don't <laughs> I don't frequent old art auctions <laughs> but in the movies they send a sit out in the crowd in one place and uh, they bring out a new piece of art and you bid on it with your little paddle it's a little like that except for you're on the move and these things are stationary they build uh, they'll find a hollowed out old you know supermarket or whatever uh, an event center uh, maybe a skating rink uh, they'll find a place and they'll they'll start piling these arcades up a lot like you would see them in an arcade they're in big rows mm -hmm. and then the whole group is kind of shifting and moving with the auctioneer and they're telling you how great the game is and they're trying to sell you on buying it and then obviously they're trying to bid it up because they get a percentage. And that's one of the drawbacks of an auction is if you sell in it, there's usually some sort of buyer's or a seller's fee that's 15%. And then if you purchase something, you're you're going to have to pay an auction fee of 15% and plus a state sales tax as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it is a good place to buy things because it's what it is kind of like the, all the arcades are in one place and, uh, you can go and kind of pick which ones you want. And then if you, there's one that you may just kind of want, but it's going for a good price. You think, Oh, well, that might be yeah. something I would add that I wouldn't normally add. Uh, so arcade auctions are definitely a thing. And right now, at least in the state of Texas, you know, and that, and again, it could be regional, but right now we're getting about two per season. So there'll be two in the winter and then two, there's two auction companies and there'll be two in the, you know, the spring and the fall and, yep. you know, summer and that sort of thing. Yep. So. I think one of the best things about that is that you have an opportunity to see arcades that have come from different parts of the U.S. So you're not oh, just totally. searching local inventory. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, searching, that's, that's a good point. You know, the, the auctions come, I mean, the, the, 
the actual machines come from all over the country to right. that location. Yeah, yeah, good point. Right, and some games, um, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, uh, which <laughs> it's all the time, but uh, some games do tend to be a little more regional. I mean, I would say stuff on the coast, if you're looking at games from the Asian market, like yep. Candy Cabs and that sort of sit-down Japanese machine, that sort of thing, that's going to come in maybe in California, but not necessarily have made its way all the way to Texas. So if you've got an auctioneer that's getting stuff out of California, you may get that, or... Maybe something that's uh, more Chicago-based because a lot of games were made in Chicago back in the day. You know, Bally Midway was based out of right there, on. and a lot, probably a lot more inventory were in was in that area than shipped down I, into I the south. I feel that way about Dynamo cabinets too, because Valley Dynamo, oh, yeah. Dynamo is here. We have Valley Dynamo right here in Dynamo. Richland Hills, <laughs> right? So you can get. I would imagine that up north of a Valley Dynamo cabinet might not be as um, frequent. And again, if you live up north and you see them all the time, let me know. And we're totally <laughs> spitballing here. Yeah. But, uh, you know, based on what we see. So an auction is a great way. That's a great point. It's a great way to maybe get something that's out of your region. So Yeah, for sure. I would also say that at auctions, there's, uh, there's really good deals and there's really <laughs> bad deals. <laughs> that's such a good point. <laughs> right, you know. That's such a good point. You know, it, the other thing, too, is you're competing against other, right. the other people. So if you're looking for, like myself, I'm going to use it for personal use. Now you're bidding against companies that want to use it or for yeah, you're right. bidding against have arcades. Right, and an operators. operator right. may have been looking for that game a little longer than you have, or they may have a little deeper pocket than you have, <laughs> yeah, let's be exactly. honest. And some operators have deeper pockets than other <laughs> operators, so uh, you tend to be up against them sometimes, and you're just like... I'll let them have it. You know, I'm just uh, out. I'm out. I'm out. You know, I put my auction card. Sometimes I don't even get my auction card all the way out. Like I can't even unholster it before I'm like, mm, I'll just put this away. Yep, I'm not. Good. I'm not down for this gunfight. Right? I don't have enough bullets in my gun <laughs> to compete with this. So that's a great, great point. Uh, where's other places you can get a game? Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, or any of the Craigslist of the or yeah. any of those things. But yeah, yeah mostly yeah. Facebook Marketplace. But yeah. So I'll give you a, the only unique perspective I can give you on this is uh, we took three years before we opened the Electric Starship Arcade, and in 2017, the market and the way you could get games changed obviously from the way it is in 2023. And what I saw early on, there was a website called Let Go. And a website called OfferUp, and I believe yeah, OfferUp Offer may have eaten Let Go yeah. uh, at some point. There was Craigslist. Uh, Craigslist was a little bit of a rougher ride, right? Like they're, the pictures might be weird or, hey, we're just putting these games out back. Come get them. They're free. I mean, it was always a lot of uh, kind of riffraffy. Uh, you know, working through, but I did. I got games from Craigslist and Let Go and Offer Up and Offer Up. I just bought a game this week from Offer Up. Yeah. So I would say there's lots of uh, scam potential. On yeah, totally. Scam, right? uh, and you're going, oh man, if you're hunting arcades, you're going to some rough areas yep. sometimes, right? I mean, uh, especially if you're looking for the deal and uh, if you're. If either your pocket's not deep just naturally and you are building that man cave, or if you're trying to build an arcade on a shoestring budget, you're going to end up in some rough areas. And sure. uh, sometimes the well, arcade. And, and even if you're not on a shoestring budget, they may have the very game you can't find anywhere. Or it that's might a great just point. be for a part that you need that's in uh, this might arcade be. that you're going <laughs> to buy. That's a yoke for, for a Star Wars game. machine. I got to go. <laughs> you know, yeah. so. Uh, so that's a that's a unique perspective, but I can say that over that time, from 2017 to now, with the rise of as many retro arcades that are leased, again, we I uh, don't have real facts behind this, but it feels like this area is probably one of the most saturated places in the U.S. as far as a retro arcade, um, but which is awesome for the people like us that like yeah. arcades. We can go all over the place, but... That saturation causes a vacuum in the market, right? So you're getting less and less option to purchase, and you're going for that rougher machine, which leads to you having to restore it a little bit. And over time, Facebook Marketplace has continued to be a really good source. Yep. Uh, and I would imagine that would be the way it would be across the country, is Facebook Marketplace would be maybe one of the better sources. Um, there also is getting Well, and I've even bought, like I've got one coming right now, I can't say what it is, but I've got one coming right now from Reno, Nevada right. that I bought off of Facebook Marketplace. Sure. So, you know, it's it's because that's I'll never see that game ever again. Yeah, me and uh, Brinley, were our, our tech, we were just restoring a game earlier, working on a restoration that we've been working on forever. And that game came on a train from California. 
and it's a rare game that I've never seen it for sale other than that mm -hmm. one time on Facebook Marketplace. And that brings us to Facebook in general. If you join groups that are arcade groups, there's sales groups uh, that you can join that are regional, and, and you can join them out of region too, so you can get those right. games shipped and transported. Yeah, and, then, and I think that the other place that was kind of surprising to me that I didn't know when I first went into this until I met you, you start to learn this community, and now we have all these friends, and so right. you know, like we know this guy in Wichita Falls, and you you just talked about Mike from yep. Arcade. Hey Mike. hey, Mike, you just talked about Mike from the arcade. <laughs> yeah, Wichita, yeah, Kansas. absolutely. And so we know all these people now, and I usually think who might in my network have that game that might want to sell it and make phone calls. That's another way to find games. What's what's Mike's uh, YouTube handle? Do you remember? Uh, it? It's Mike's Amateur Arcade Repair, and he's also got uh, your your M One K or or your M K One Source, source. something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both those channels are fantastic. I've yeah, learned awesome, a lot awesome from channel. those channels. And uh, Roman just went up and visited him. I just visited him. Got a couple of monitors. Bought, bought some monitors for me. <laughs> Which was a surprise, and I was like, "Thanks, Roman." <laughs> he uh, awesome. he built the first, as far as I know, the first uh, recent remake of the Tattoo Assassins. Oh uh, no! In, and in I, I oh, did, I bought all the artwork you, from. You, yeah, and we're gonna build an Tattoo Assassins <laughs> at some point. So we need that weird, awesome game here at the Starship. Yeah, I got to play that over at a Galloping Ghost. Uh, oh, very, yeah, I did. Very too. unique. It is unique, folks. <laughs> if you haven't played. Go play Tattoo Assassins on any, I don't know, emulation or whatever, <laughs> MAME, I guess. Uh, it's uh, It was a prototype game by Data East, and it hadn't come out. That uh, it, it never came out, but there were some prototype versions of it. But uh, we're going to build one out of an MK cabinet and be awesome. have yeah. it in the arcade. It'll be fun. So. Um, so we're talking about Facebook groups. Are there any groups that you are a part of? Uh, well, if you own an arcade, mm. we have to pimp our own group, which is Pimping arcade, our group. arcade owners and operators. Got to Roman, you want to be part of our group? I do. I do. Total, I we'll, we'll get Roman in just because he does. He owns his home arcade. Oh, yeah. So Roman's got a unique perspective of where he's bought some games that we have something in common. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that I've seen is, uh, you know, looking around to Mike's point, it's hard to find those Japanese games. Absolutely. That you have over here in Texas. Uh, there's a lot of, you want to talk about some trust <laughs> issues, about to get into some. So, you know, we see, I see some coming from California, but shipping is just another thing too. Right. Um, they don't want to do any shipping. They want you to pick it up. So it makes it difficult. So <laughs> Absolutely. what I do is, uh, you look towards China and Japan yeah, yeah. and, uh, you yeah. start talking with some people that don't speak very much English. Oh, um, they don't yeah. have very much credentials and you're taking that leap of faith that you're going to meet someone and they're going to ship you something. And, uh, and hope by the way, it it there's a whole lot of scam potential, a lot of yeah. scam potential. Folks. Sometimes you have to take a risk. And, so, you know, would you recommend it then? Like, it would be hard for me to say I recommend it. I can tell you someone I do recommend, you know, that, that's a good contact for us, but um, would I, you recommend it? I would say find something local first if you can. Sure. And by local, I mean in the U.S. And right. if you're going to spend that extra money to have something shipped, if you're going to spend 1500 bucks to $2,000 to ship something, which prices are coming down now, but sure. during the height of the pandemic, you know, if you're gonna spend that much, it might be worth just to rent a truck and go pick it up yourself if you're really gonna do that. Absolutely. If you're looking for something that you just can't find, I would at least talk to someone who's ordered from someone and try to get, don't just pick up something random on the online. Talk to someone. Talk to an operator. You know, talk to us. You know, right. we'll, uh, yeah. You know, and it's, shoot and a it's, comment. And let us know. You know, and it's not just trust issues and things like that. You mentioned the language barrier, and we're not, right. you know, trying to say anything other than just a language barrier, right? But We've had experiences where you thought you were ordering a certain part and you got something else, and it's not because somebody's trying to scan sure. you. It's just a miscommunication. Absolutely. Right? You, get, you get a gun that's the small one. You thought you were getting the big one or, or whatever. Right. So, yeah, you just have to be careful with those. Absolutely. Yeah, <clears throat> have you had any... Uh, have you gotten a game that you've paid for and you thought you were getting a little something else and then it turned out to be... A crap shack, like well, just the, <laughs> so. I don't say just for it less to of a term. Bad, but I, I did. You know, when you get something and they say it's refurbished or it's going to be completely refurbished, and you get it and you look at it, and you're like, wow. You know, this there's is, leaves inside of it. Just, that's not what I thought. <laughs> I <laughs> haven't heard this story. You know, so <laughs> whatever know, it is, you get it. They're gonna they show you a picture online. It's the most beautiful thing ever. Oh my god. And the next thing you know, they must have like tied it behind the boat when they were shipping it over oh, here. Totally. They just oh, dragged it over an, here as a boat anchor. <laughs> um, Waterlogged. I did hear you got one with like a forklift yep that's the other the part is that you know when it's going into a container and you're you're shipping in a mixed container you're going to mm -hmm. have stuff in there that's mixed with everyone else so it's not going to come straight to your house and it's all yours so 
Now you're going to have it handled multiple times. You're going to have it transferred from one trucking company to another one, to another one. Then it's going to finally get delivered to your house. And unfortunately for me, I had one that was forklift through the bottom of a oh, camera. Oh, that so, hurts. Yeah, when that happened, it's you know. It's a blast city? It's a blast city. Uh, straight Sega Blast City is a sit-down candy cab, uh, you know, which is just a Japanese term for their sit-down games and yeah 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 do you, do you have right a, through it do you have a yeah. picture of that i, I do i'll have to get S- your picture to me i'll put it yeah, out we'll so he's done something really neat with it though yeah you, so uh, I, you know you get lemon you make lemonades right that's so right yeah. you made really pretty blueberry <laughs> lemonade out of it <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm a big camp a uh, fanboy here so i decided to go ahead and make um a capcom mini cabinet so it's uh, i call it my baby blue instead of a big blue ah. <laughs> so, that's awesome um, so yeah i got it painted um did some work to it um had some issues, so many issues with the monitors, you know, you don't know how things are going to come over and it's hard to find those parts for those arcades here. And there's not a lot of people that want to work on. on Yeah. Cause even the, the, like the arcade, like there's arcade parts and repair.com that sells all these different like components and stuff. They don't sell any of the stuff or they don't, they don't even sell the connectors if you want to make your own. So you have to start ordering those, getting those online and trying to figure out how you're going to, uh, you know, how you're going to fix those. Um, you know, right now, currently I'm going through, how do I make a Wells Gardner into a, candy cab so oh, I'm, oh. i've made i love the experimentation <laughs> yeah i've got some harnesses that i've made just a lot of connectors converting it from one to the next and just trying to set it up so he was sending me pictures last night he had made <laughs> these extension cables are running across the room and i'm like wow it's amazing <laughs> i miss that folks i miss when i didn't have to get ready for the next wave of customers to come in on whatever day we open and I could have stuff strewn out all over the place, yeah. <laughs> which is right now, actually, the arcade is always destroyed on a Monday and a yeah. Tuesday. So I, I will say one thing. If you're going to get something from overseas and you're <clears throat> in uncharted territory, even if you're getting something from the U.S., brush up on your reading schematic skills unless you have oh, yeah. the money to start yeah. paying people to repair all the time. But tracing one wire that goes through 50 different loops and connectors. Yeah, harnesses can be tough, folks. Yeah, it, it's yeah. definitely worthwhile to understand what you're reading and get a really good multimeter. That's my advice to anybody. I would say getting a good multimeter <laughs> yes, is my good it. advice uh, to yeah. anybody who wants to work on it. I want to say period. thank you to Mike Murray. He gave me a good multimeter <laughs> for Christmas one year, and I love it. Actually, it's a fluke. Uh, That's yeah, a great fluke, multimeter. Yeah. Uh, folks, if you don't know what a multimeter is, this is how you're going to test uh, continuity and ohms and uh, voltage. voltage on your arcade machine, which voltage is a huge problem, <laughs> usually on any, just a lot of wire to go through and, uh, you know, converting power from the wall in a switching power supply or you know, even a linear power supply. Yep. Uh, you need that voltage meter. So um, if you're getting into arcades, buy one of those first. Uh, yeah. I would say have that handy, a and, multimeter. And don't, don't skimp on it. Don't skimp on it. Don't skimp on it like Mike Woods would. That's stupid. Don't go to our... Should I say Harbor Freight? <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't Harbor Freight your multimeter. You don't have to folks. get a fluke. There's no. like EV, EV blog or whatever. They sell a really great one that's like just it's like half the price of a fluke. Right. But yeah. But, but yeah, get a good one. Don't. That's uh, good. I recommend a backlit one if you get one. Oh, so you can oh see yeah. Because you're dark. gonna be in a dark yeah, arcade. Be in, a dark arcade. <laughs> be in dark. I, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Mike, have you got an arcade that you thought? I think you got one recently. Actually, I know that story here. <laughs> that you thought. Great. Man, I'm getting a good deal. And then all of a sudden you're like, holy smokes, I'm in a hellhole here. Oh, uh, well, you know, I know which one you're thinking of, I think. Ah, uh, well, give me a better story if but it's not the one you're No, I'm no, no. We'll, we'll use that one because it is a good learning lesson. I, uh, I'm just going to tell you what it is. I bought a Terminator Salvation, the big deluxe one with the, uh, the 42 inch screen and the big giant Terminator topper. Yeah, it's a Raw Thrills, Raw Thrills is the game. manufacturer of that one. Yeah, and I bought it at auction. And, and I, I want to say this before I say any of that. It is buyer beware, and it is buyer's responsibility to check the machine thoroughly before you buy it and know what you're getting into. This is how you learn lessons. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I learned, uh, learned a new lesson on this one. I, um, I got it home and realized it had some very much purposefully hidden damage and miswiring. And I mean, there was literally like um, there were some wires that were literally tied together and then taped with masking tape kind of stuff that was, but then it, they had shoved it underneath where you couldn't see it when you're looking right. at it at the auction. Um, several things like that. The back of it was been cracked and I, I believe Mike's quote it. was, Mike, this has been dropped off a truck. It was dropped <laughs> off a truck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, and they had put, again, they had put another board up underneath it, screwed it in and they painted it black. So we were just looking underneath. Oh, wow. Sneaky, it. sneaky. Yeah, it was really sneaky. Don't so, be sneaky at the auction. Folks. Shame on the seller, but shame on me for not doing, right. doing more research. So I had to wind up putting about another $800 into that game, you know, fixing it and 
I mean, it looks brand new. <laughs> and it does. Uh, you know, but, luckily, Mike is a heck of a restoration artist. Um, you know, and that and there there goes the trick, right? Because everybody wants a good deal, but sometimes when you pay for that good deal. It comes with all these issues, and all of a sudden that time is money, money is money. If you're having to buy parts and stuff like guns and things like mm -hmm. that to, to get a game like that going. And uh, obviously the newer the game, probably the more expensive the part. In, a lot, in some cases, obviously some old games have old PCBs that are very expensive. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you get a Terminator gun or you're starting to buy yeah. little... Um, camera boards or whatever they're called, little sensors for the gun to the camera on the gun to read. So yeah, that's expected. And, and we've heard quick. we've heard so many stories from the auction where people will say, "Oh, I I didn't look in to see if it had the original board," and they get home and find it has a sixty and one. Oh uh, yeah, that's, you know, rough. So, that's rough. You know, it's really important to at least do some inspection before bring a good can. flashlight with you. I always would bring at least a handheld screwdriver just so I could at maybe get the, because usually the backs don't have a lock on them or if they, they usually have one screw holding the wood and auction games are not necessarily the nicest games. That's why they're at the auction. And a lot of times it's, um, people couldn't get them working and the auctioneer's job is like to just get them enough working to where they're right. going to sell for the most amount of money because they're getting paid on that percentage. Yep, so exactly. There's nothing wrong with that, exactly. you know, but it, if you don't do your due diligence, you could be stuck with a, a lemon yeah, and, and have and to and make it, lemonade. Exactly. But in, in all fairness as well, I think that if you're buying anything from the auction or even ordering anything overseas, the expectation should be that you're going to have to do some work on it. Oh, I think, At that's least a that's really, exactly what, what I would say. That is why I set yourself up for disappointment. Exactly. Right? That's a really smart way to go about it. Now, on the on the flip side, I mean, I, I've gotten some really smoking deals. I bought sure. at two, two, what, three auctions ago. Three auctions ago, I bought a RevX. The guns didn't work, and the monitor was kind of wonky, and it literally took like, I bet you within 10 or 15 minutes of work, I had it working like brand new again. It was just because somebody didn't know what they were doing. You right. Know? So you can get some really screaming deals too. Uh, what, what Mike's talking about is uh, Midway's um, Aerosmith Revolution X. It's yeah. a, a, a rail shooting gun game that's you know similar to Midway's Terminator, Terminator. 2 from yep. that time period. Uh, and that game, it's so funny. I looked for that game for three years. And I paid double what Mike paid, <laughs> just like maybe two auctions before that. And uh, now I've seen three or four of them. <laughs> That's the way inevitably it'll go, guys. You'll look for a game forever and ever and ever, and you'll finally just say whatever and pay extra for it. And then you're going to find 10 of them for half as much. So that's the way normally, you know, you know, that's my luck anyway. You know, I would say also, if you're if you're new to this, that maybe go to an auction and just watch and write the prices down. Oh, that's a great plan. You, know, yeah. you, can, yep. you can go to two or three of them and you can kind of lear learn what things are going to sell for and what conditions bring what money and things like that. And you actually segued into what I was going to talk about is how do you know what to pay for these things, mm. right? So uh, what the way I learned and the way I try to help that is I would watch recorded auction videos on YouTube. And then when I... Hey, we know somebody that does that. Yeah, me. <laughs> uh, I... I, I I think people really like that. I mean, one, I think there's a little bit of excitement to an auction that will cause you to pay a little more. By the way, as uh, you're getting into that exciting, like I want to win it. You know, you feel like you're winning, but you're, you're losing really losing. <laughs> really losing money is what you're doing. Um, but I would watch an auction video and I would write down and learn. You know, basically what the formula was for you know how much these things cost. And there's there's tons of auctions that go on. There's that captain's auction up north that's you know, and you'll see some astronomical prices uh, for some games. But that'll give you at least an idea of. And if you're looking at those prices on a Facebook marketplace and you see what it's not selling for, and then you see them lower it to a certain price and it sells instantly, that's kind of how I started building my own yeah. mental price yeah. guide. Uh, there's a great uh, site called Exidy's Price Guide. If y'all haven't, and you can look that up. That's E X I D Y S. And uh, John Exidy, I, I can't remember. I'm so sorry, folks. I'm terribly ill prepared for this. But there are some price guides on the internet, and and they're guides. That's something important yeah. to remember on that because condition drives price, right? It does yeah, absolutely. Does. You know, one thing to to keep in mind too is when you're looking at arcades, there could be multiple versions of the same game Ooh, that's so true. you need to know what you're looking for and what you want it may be in a different kind of cab it may have different art it may have re repro art or it may have original art so there's a lot of things that you need to look at so yeah there may be yeah. a not so rare version of the game you want that costs less right right you know and and in my opinion you know once you've done your research and looked up pricing and you know what you want 
have a mindset on what you're going to spend and stick to it. Because if not, you could always spend a lot more than what you want to. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're at an auction, especially at an auction, and there's somebody there that wants that game more than you, they're going to pay more. <laughs> right. No matter right. what, you know. So you're fighting with that in an auction that you might not be fighting with on a Facebook marketplace. Correct. You know, there's perceived value of an item, right? Like, so we see a, a game that we like, and let's say Mike looks at it, that game, and he says, okay, that's an $800 game. And I look at it like, well, Mike's, uh, you know, <laughs> what they don't, what people might not know is Mike has the ability to restore that game because all kinds of arcade parts, and he's like really good at working, you know, woodworking and that sort of thing. So he can fix these Bondo. things. Bondo. Bondo things right <laughs> up. Whereas uh, I might pay another couple hundred bucks for that, and he doesn't perceive that as a good deal anymore. But I'm just trying to get it home, and I don't mind a little patina on it. You know right. what I mean? Or uh, like I don't really care about changing out the overlay. I just want the dang game. So, you know, there's different ways to look at it, you know, and what yeah. might be a deal. I think the, might the big be. thing you missed is I have a vinyl printer and I can print right. artwork. Just print for, artwork. For like, it might cost you $300 or $400. Right. To get that off the internet, but I can print it for like 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your vinyl printer is well paid for by now. So <laughs> yeah, now it's so. just uh, shooting free money out. All right. So uh, to, to print out that vinyl artwork. Yeah. And then as you get into newer games too, and by newer, you know, nineties, yeah. <laughs> but newer than the eighties. So, yeah. You get into like CPS two, and this is a whole other topic. We'd probably come on. I love it. Let's but if segue. You're, if you're right. looking for a street fighter two cab and you find a X-Men versus street fighter, mm -hmm. you may actually want to buy that because you can yeah. convert that over. Cause it is the right cab. It has the right artwork or the right pieces on it that you could just change the marquees on. So when you're collecting those things, there's other things you could look at than just that one specific machine. Oh, you, you, you're right. You know, I, like Mike and I went through this because I looked forever, and then now it's the same story. We've seen a hundred of them since, but I could not find a RoboCop. We're like, well, you could buy something like a Bad Dudes or something and convert it to right. RoboCop. You know, right? The, and this brings up another subject altogether, and this is simply time and education is. Where you want to get, the, and this segues into my next point, it's like, well, how do you know you're getting a good deal? What's a good deal? So a lot of times in the 80s, a game would come out, and it would be as popular as it was going to be, right? And maybe it was a Pac-Man because they made a bunch of them, right? Mm -hmm. And then at some point, the money that that game was earning slowed down considerably. And so now you're kind of stuck with an arcade cabinet. And it's not making that however many thousand dollars a week. It's making a couple hundred bucks or maybe in the under a hundred dollars. So instead of buying a whole new game, arcade manufacturers came up. One of the early ones was uh, Crystal Castles. Crystal Castles. Uh, or, or I'm sorry, a conversion for Crystal Castles, which is uh, Agent X or Cloak and Dagger. Uh, so this is an early, and it was a kit. So uh, Atari sends out a kit for Cloak and Dagger, right? And you're not getting a whole arcade machine. You're getting a board and maybe some stickers. You know, you put the decals on the side, you get your overlay. Maybe you change out the marquee. Or maybe you're a cheaper operator and you just paint the thing black. You know, here comes Batman's black now. But they would send out specific kits to actually take over other games too. So uh, you take a, a Williams Defender or a Williams Stargate off the floor and turn it into an Atari game and you didn't have to manufacture the cabinet so kits started coming out roston is famous a famous uh, tato kit and every operator must have bought it must have been cheap because roston has been converted to everything like i've seen a roston tempest a roston you know joust is very common a lot of the williams games got converted so what i'm getting at though is once you get an idea of the shape of a cabinet, and we did this, if you look up um, on the Starship's YouTube channel, I did a Qbert for a time rift, and it had been turned into Tiger Heli. And someone had painted a whole face on the side of that thing. And but I saw it, it on. graffitied <laughs> it on. So it's this big silver graffiti. And there's no way that the I mean, maybe an arcade, somewhat of aficionado or something might know, but there's no way you would look at that and go, that was a Qbert. Okay. I, I have to take a, a little tangent on this. Okay, okay. okay? Go ahead. It's such a great story. So I wanted, I'd, like, I had this list of games. That I Absolutely. Wanted, what like, you need to start like, if you're trying like, to open an arcade. Make must, a list first. That's a must game. have games, you know, right? And Qbert was on, the, on there. And so Mike sent me this thing. It was a picture of this Tiger Heli thing. And it literally was like pa painted gray. And then somebody had graffitied with spray paint on the side yeah. of it. Look so, up the YouTube. But so we got a whole video on it. Find it. It's it's amazing. So And it was $125. $125. And I was like, you got to go get it. And I'm like, I don't want a Tiger Heli. Why should I go get this? <laughs> it's not a Tiger Heli. It's a Qbert. Go get it. <laughs> That's what he told me. And so I'm like, okay, fine. I went and got it. And then when I got there, I was even more disappointed because yeah. it was in such horrible 
shape. I mean, good bones, right? But right. horrible shape. So we brought it back to the shop, put it in the shop. It sat there for, I don't know. <laughs> no. Mike was like, when are you going to start that cuber? <laughs> when are you going to get on yeah, that cuber? It sat there for several months, and then Mike <laughs> started restoring it. And every day I'd go out there and look at it, make a little bit more progress. And it went from a $125 game to what we saw sell at auction for $4,000. $4,000 is what a Cubert sells Here for recently. Auction. And, recently. And so, yeah, absolutely, it's worth it. You know, Right, so that's a thing. You can study, especially, again, Williams games. There's some rare Williams games, and almost every Williams game is desirable from mm -hmm. Sinistar and Joust and Robotron 2084 to even, like, a little bit more rare stuff like bubbles and uh, you can get really rare if you keep going into Blaster and Inferno and things like that. But the uh, these games are desirable, especially the ones, some of the early ones, like the Jousts and uh, that. I mean, you just kind of need those in your arcade defender. Mm -hmm. And those games got converted a lot. Uh, and if you can recognize the shape yeah. of the cabinet, you can get... You can make yourself a Robotron again. Yeah. To the point is, I didn't recognize the shape of the cabinet at that time. I would now. <laughs> right, yeah. And now you've, that you've was been, two uh, years ago or something. Right. But, yeah, Mike recognized it immediately, and he said, that's a screaming deal. Go get it, you know? Yeah, that's a Gottlieb cabinet, and you can turn that into Mad Planets or Cubert real quick. I mean, <laughs> Mad Planets a little tough. And, and control panel stuff. the original. You, know? you can get great deals if you decide you want to put the work into it. Right. You have to do some of the That's work. how you know you got a good deal, but um, you got to be able to sit around and restore that and, and find parts. I mean, sometimes that, you know, finding the proper joystick uh, for Cubert is tough. And that they, they finally just started remaking them. Uh, and in that video, I thought I had the right joystick, and sure enough, it was like an Australian joystick with... It just wasn't the right one. Uh, Very close. Okay. It was close, but it wasn't. It, it wasn't that close at the end when I was looking. I was like, "Gosh, I was really wrong." <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I thought I was even as an original joystick, but it did not. But we put a a new uh, modern remake of that, and that kind of brings us to something Mike, you know, does at the Geek Pub is he has parts for uh, either total new builds or restoration, mm -hmm. especially like team molding. Mm -hmm. Nothing like team molding to refresh a game. It's amazing what just just a, taking a cabinet that's in kind of poor shape, putting brand new team molding on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like it's Night like day. Night day. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you, and this is where we get into a, a fun topic of resto mod or uh, restoration, right? Or... And, custom build <laughs> or custom build and then you start getting into do i put the original board set or do i put a board set where i can play 60 games on my one arcade mm -hmm. cabinet at the house or do i put on a different color team molding that just maybe they didn't put red team molding on track and field but i think it looks really good on track and field or do i put an lcd screen or do i put a crt in there that you drive to another or, state to get can you even find that crt can you even can find you it even you know find it yeah and that's a tough one right there is just being able to find the parts to repair these games but uh never give up hope um you know i don't think any of those are, are wrong answers but right, i don't either depends on what the use is and what you're going to do with it absolutely absolutely don't yeah. don't tell any don't let anyone tell you how to spend your money folks yeah. you know yeah. uh, and especially if like love the arcades technology is changing and some of it you just can't find. Absolutely. Um, once yeah. a board dies, you got to try to find it again or yeah. find other. Well, boards. and let me let me give you an example of something for me that I think is really important. Like I try to keep all the original components. Sure. The cabinet. Every cabinet I buy or of any kind, I try to keep the original components. Either I keep them on a shelf or I just leave them in the bottom of the cabinet. Right. right? Uh, but an example for me is a switching power supply. I almost always put a switching power supply in, and it's not because the game won't run just fine on the original power supply that was, you know. <coughs> didn't keep its voltage right. <laughs> to well be, to be but an important thing to remember is when these were built they were built for six months yeah like yeah. the fact that we're running these 30 years later or is, 50 in or some 50 case. you know <laughs> uh the fact that these games are still going is an absolute miracle and um i applaud the dedication of any arcade that runs yeah. retro games Absolutely. like that so by putting something like a switching power supply in place of the original power supply I can guarantee that game's probably not going to have any problems where the, the linear power supply that was in it might burn something out right. and make, cause additional damage. Right? It could cause a fire. It Safeties could, have changed a lot since some of those have come out. It could cause a fire, out. absolutely. So, 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you kind of got to think about some of those things when you're when you're going through that, uh, especially if you're an operator, because you're running these games. You're basically taking a, an old man that has retired from the NBA and he's been <laughs> retired from 30 years, and you're not just putting him in for a shot or to shoot free throws because he's still good at it. You're like you're going in the game and you're playing the whole time, the whole 12 hour shift, exactly like you did when you were a rookie. Yeah, you got to play, <laughs> and you can't make a mistake because we need all these games up. You know, so that is that is such a fantastic point because when you have a home arcade cabinet, you're going to turn it on for an hour here, absolutely an hour there. You're not going to run it 12 hours a day, right? That this, makes a difference. This brings me to pinball. <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> uh, I feel like the modern pinball machine is made for the collector, and uh, you're right. It's by the time it breaks, you know, the backstop on a you know uh, behind the solenoid, you know, on a flipper mech goes out. And that thing's going out in the first month in an arcade, you know, but I have one from the 90s and it's got rust on it and hadn't gone out yet. Right. You know what I mean? So there's a, zip ties. Uh, a right. I'm <laughs> telling you, zip ties. Uh, factory zip ties. You almost so, make it sound like a screw can back out and cause oh the my God. to stop working. Oh my God. <laughs> so uh, I had Roman come up one night. I was like, hey, Roman, I got a machine that's uh, just acting up and I can't. I can't get it to stop like resetting constantly. I need to take it off the floor. You want to come up one night, we're going to close at midnight and I need to tear down a pinball machine, which means taking the legs off, holding the head and putting it upright and then break another one out and reverse that same thing. So you're looking at, you know, if you're fast, I'm sure you can get it done in under an hour, but still it's, you know, you're getting it up and then you got to make sure it's clean. The rubbers are right and all that good stuff and the flippers are right. And anyway, so we're planning on pulling a, not an all nighter, but definitely into that one thirty two o'clock range off of midnight and uh my buddy kevin moore at pinball ers if you're in the local area dfw area uh him and jess do great kevin and jess they do great work on as far as uh, helping pinball machines come back uh from all kinds of horrible uh, you know <laughs> things and uh he said he sent me a text and goes hey i'm looking at this forum and it looks like just maybe a screw backed out and it's touching a metal rail and it's grounding it out and i went and he sent me a picture, and I was like, well, I'm looking at the underside of a pinball machine, which if you've ever not seen one, it's, it's quite nuts. scary. I'll, I'll put it's, one uh, on the screen here. <laughs> yeah, there's a, it's, uh, it's uh, a bit overwhelming, if it's, it's, especially the first is. time you've seen one. And uh, I'm looking at his picture. I'm like, now, where in the world? There's 37,000 screws staring at me. Which one is backed out? And sure enough, I, and all I did was... Ink, 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 screw it back in and the machine was fine and wrote, we fixed it in five minutes i'm like well you want to play some video game let's go to third strike roman let's go play let's so uh anyway so yeah there's a uh, but pinball i don't know i don't know how i got on that subject but uh other than these games were they feel like if they're built modern day they're built for home use and uh but the games that we're putting back in were like supposed to last six months yeah so uh and uh, the fact that we're still running them you might you might pride point dive onto that a little bit deeper, the six month thing, because I don't know how many people really know that. So, you know, when they, you got to think of uh, an arcade's lifespan, just a, an arcade machine, I should say. Um, they're they're going to be popular if they're, they're good uh, and people are going for high scores and that sort of thing. But I don't think manufacturer warranties were for very long, right? Yeah, they were like 90 days. <laughs> right. Yeah. So all they got to do is stand up right and turn on for about six months and uh, they've, they're clear, you know. And, and usually back then when a new arcade machine came out, you're, you weren't competing with iPads and Netflix right. and things like that. I mean, entertainment was different back then. You might have been competing with people that didn't have cable or cable wasn't around quite yet. Uh, they might have had like four stations to look at on TV and they had an Atari 2600 at home and Donkey Kong was just a brown glob and in person on a Nintendo cabinet, he looked like an ape, you know, yeah. throwing a barrel. So um, that game just needed to last a little long and they're going to make all that money in six months. They're not going to feel bad when it breaks right. down in six months. They've, they made plenty of money off of it. So uh, they just weren't designed for what we're making them do, um, at least in my opinion. So, yep. And I am, I am darn proud of them, though, especially all the ones that don't give me any trouble. You know, not only that, you've got to keep in mind, new games are coming out, so they're going to have to move stuff out to make room for new games. Absolutely. So if something was on its last leg, they didn't even think twice about oh my pushing well, how how push many, these things in the garbage. I was just about yep. to say, how many cabinets went in dumpsters? Yep. You just top, toss it in. And I, it I doubt away. anyone ever thought that the tube TV would ever go out of style. Oh, you I know. know. I mean... Modern day, serious business. When people clean out their house, I can still find tube TVs on the side of the curb. Yep. 
And I scoop them up in my truck like a hoarder, <laughs> like an like x-ray hoarder. <laughs> I just put it in my truck. So, um, yeah, that that's a thing that people just didn't think about. I, I just don't think anybody did. And uh, there used to be TV repairmen. There's not TV repairmen now. The flat screen breaks? That oh, sure gives there, them the dump. There is. So what? Really? There, yes, right here on just one street. Up, I'm wrong and, again. Yeah. But. I just, it's the cell phone repair place. Okay. Just down the street, they actually have a sign in the window because I only know because I pulled into the pizza place and was staring uh, at their yes. sign, but it says we repair TVs. Well, there's one in, there is actually one in Hearst as well. But I'm really wrong. I, I've actually <laughs> called a few of these. I've, I've, if you look them up, you can find some. Okay. I said, hey, do you uh, still work on security? Oh, no, we haven't done that in like 20 years. I just feel like most people <laughs> don't even, th- I don't think of that. I think if your TV breaks, just go buy a new TV. Right. That, that's what I would coming. do. Right. I mean, I actually, I probably wouldn't now that I know how to repair arcade right. monitors because it's uh, great yeah. video, by the way. I, I watched. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Very, put out a video, awesome. Mike. Yeah. Tell, them, yeah. tell them about your video. Yeah, so we yeah. just put out a video here a couple days ago on the Time Rift channel, right. and it's uh, me and my brother, the Eight Bit Guy, and we uh, replaced the backlight on a what would be a trash monitor. Now it looks brand new again. Oh, it does. It looks and fantastic. Fifty dollar repair. I'll be honest. I never. When I saw that, I never knew that's what the inside of a TV looked like, an LCD so TV, simple. and it was... LED, a strip of LEDs running across Not to take anything from me from fixing yeah, that, but yeah. it looked very simple. It is. It's the, the thing about repairing those monitors is, and my brother called it, I think in the video he called it like peeling back an onion. Yep. Yes. It is layer after layer after layer after things you have to take off. And I didn't show, but about right. a tenth of it on the video because it's just, it'd be, people get bored and tune out, right? Right. But it takes about an hour to take that monitor completely apart, change the backlight and put it all back together. You know, you know that's, I've done it like five times. Right. Now, so. And, and so the difference in a commercial television though, when people say, oh, I'll just buy a new TV and they usually would toss it because the amount that someone would charge to fix that would be probably less than they can get a black Friday probably flat so. screen. Yeah. So, but the difference in that arcade monitor without that frame and everything that comes with, you know, in a stand and everything comes on a commercial TV. It's made to mount inside. Yeah, the those are expensive and they're not like a just cheap around the corner you can run buy one at Best Buy. Um, yeah. Now, if you're building your own arcade, you can And they have like some additional components like fans. Sure. A beefier right. power supply. Absolutely. And stuff to make them because they, again, run 12 hours a day. Absolutely. And a lot of proprietary connections on it too that mm-hmm. you're just... Yep. can't have without anything, getting the original one. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's a good point. I mean, like yep. some of the like some of the monitors run off of like a um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, I can't believe it. I'm just losing my mind here. The little yellow connector that's RCA a oh, composite. Yeah. Oh. A lot of the games you know run off of composite. Like a modern TV doesn't. You can't even buy that I know of a modern LCD TV. Oh, <laughs> I haven't seen one with in a so composite long. connector on the back of it. Yeah. Speaking of monitors, if we're talking about arcades, and we'll get back into the more retro arcades, what do you think about, and I think this is just, to me, it boils down to ownership and what you want to deal with and, and what you're running at your house. Or What do you think about uh, putting LCD monitor in a retro game? And what do you think about, or do you keep it CRT? Are you a stickler for it? Do you think you know some games look better? What, uh, what about, what's your opinion, Romy? So monitors are a very touchy subject for everyone. Oh my gosh. It's in the comments here. here this yeah, we're going to yeah. spark so, some comments based yeah. on your answers here. Oh, here so, so here's the way I see it. I think that if, uh, if you're playing old games, you should be playing them on a CRT. That's oh, personal. All personal right. Opinion. Romans, but, yeah, it is uh, a yeah. flag in the sand here, but, uh, put but, his foot down. Yes. But I'll, I'll explain a little bit more. So knowing how games were made, they were made to use scan lines. Right. And the scan line gives the actual graphics shape. Because it's, it's, it's taken part of that in the, in the design part of it. True. So when you want to play a game and you want it to look like it did, you want to play it on a CRT. Well, uh, well, Roman, what about filters? So, scan line filters? Well, you know, then you have to put all these things <laughs> in play. Now we're talking about, you know, it, 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 it's a little bit, it's, it, like I said, it's very controversial <laughs> here. Ah, so, I love it. But uh, what I would say is that if you have the ability to put a CRT, put a CRT. But what I'm also saying is that if you can't find one, I'm not going to tell you don't play your game. Don't let anybody tell you how to spend your own Why money. Would, I like that. Why would you like say, that. hey, Roman said he we should do it on a CRT, so we can't play it because all we have is an LCD. Well, and, right. and look, I mean, some people that aren't, or may, especially if you're just first getting into this, working on a CRT is a... Pain. It's scary. It's scary. It's, it's dangerous. It's, it's deadly. Um, Seriously, it could, literally. Could be deadly. My yeah. middle name is getting <laughs> yeah. shocked by an CRT. No, so it's danger. If, if, you've, if you've got a home arcade and you want to put an LCD in it, yeah, I think by, I think more power to you. It's fine. But I do agree. I prefer this. Yeah. CRT. So you know, there's there's so many things to go into. Like if you're gonna play every once in a while and you're just playing it 
I don't want to say for fun because everyone plays for fun, but if you're just piddling around with it or you're going to get it for your kids to play and you put an LCD, there's not going to be any issue. I'm not going to call you out for having yeah. an LCD Probably on it. I'll call you out. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a story um, uh, about this. So I have, um, I got a, uh, the uh, lovely people at uh, Twin Galaxies, Jace Hall, uh, donated a couple of three arcades for, <laughs> for this uh, time rift. Thank you, Twin Galaxies. Thank you, Twin Galaxies. And um, one of the games I got was a 60-in-1 machine. It was like a Pac-Man cabinet or Galaga cabinet. I can't remember. Yeah, I think they had a multi It was a multi right? And it has an LCD in it. And I took the games that were in it out, and I put a Mr. Do in it. And so it's now a Mr. Do cabinet, and it's running, still running the LCD screen right and i have it set up and operational at my warehouse right now and i have had i i bet you i've had 30 or 40 people that have come through because i kind of try to make it a thing play this game is there anything that you notice about it that yeah yeah he's testing the that you target. don't like and i've only had like two people say well i wish it had a crt right everybody else is like what are you talking about they, they don't even know they don't even know i don't even know <laughs> so you know another part of that crt debate is what are you putting it on? Because if you're putting it on a Pac-Man or anything from the 80s, oh. it's not going to affect me. Okay, look but, here. But if you're putting it onto a Capcom CPS2 oh, yeah. game oh, or a huh. CPS1, there's lag on mm. these. Now, there's a lot of technology out there that's reducing this lag, and it's getting better, and it's getting better. That's um, a great point. Bob. But you know, if you're used to playing on a CRT and you're playing Street Fighter, and you're trying to do your moves, and then you move on to an LCD, you're going to miss a lot because you're going to feel that the timing is just off. Okay. I, I, I want to I be clear. I, I totally agree with you, and I wasn't trying to say that I, right. like, no, no, no. Everybody should just put LCDs in. <laughs> That's not what I mean. I always think you should put a CRT in if you can. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. I'm just saying if you don't, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. If you don't, it's fine. It's <laughs> definitely okay. You know, there's the other very, very, very bad thing is that they don't make LCDs and the size that you need. Four by three LCDs are far and few in between now. There's a couple of companies out there, Unico, Phoenix, yeah, uh, yeah that, that has the, their their monitor, but the largest is a 26. So if you're running something on a 27 or if you're running anything yep. from Japan that's on a 29, which is technically a 27 here, it's not going to fit exactly. Yep. And, you know, they're still relatively new and there's some bugs with it, but it's to each their own. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is that have fun with whatever you do. That's absolutely. That's if you're having fun, is that? Really, I love is that. that. I absolutely yeah, love absolutely. that. Definitely have fun with what you do. So, uh, so Roman, is it okay to? What if it has a CRT and it's working? Matter of fact, what if your whole arcade does and you decide that you just don't want to deal with those future problems? Do you wipe out those CRTs and replace them all with LCDs? <laughs> I don't think it's worth your time to wipe them out because. <laughs> you, oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> like I've fixed, know, a like, of, <laughs> fixed a lot of fixed a lot of CRTs. I feel the same way about. I've I've heard people talk about emulation and stuff. It's like it's would be harder. To emulate everything, oh, it would just need to run the original boards. Or it, the same thing with the monitor. It's just, it's just, it would be too much trouble to rip It'd them off. It'd be too much trouble <laughs> like, to gut every like, machine and yeah. put <laughs> emulation and CRTs in them I'm more or, or about LCDs in them. How many bezels are you gonna have to custom make oh, just to fit? That? I'm just, not even worried just about layering the problems up. on top of yeah, problems. Well, let, make that, let, make let me the weigh lining. in. Let me weigh in. Yeah, every arcade owner, if we're getting to ownership, and I would imagine this would transfer to home ownership too, and Roman obviously backing this up because of his home arcades and him driving to Iowa. Is that where you just <laughs> no, went? No, Kansas. Kansas, Kansas <laughs> same day, whatever, <laughs> up there somewhere, above Texas. Uh, you know, to pick up a CRT, I absolutely can't stand it to be lcd i cannot <laughs> like and it bothers me on pac-man it bothers me on street fighter it bothers me on everything and and where you say into the lag that's one of your reasonings mine is i like a crt for a couple of other reasons one i do like that bright x-ray right yep. like i like that line that scan yeah, line especially drawing especially on a vector Right. Oh God. You put an L C D in a vector, just I don't I can't even I mean, I love you, I'll live with you, but uh, you know, we're not gonna watch the same T V shows in the same room or anything. So uh, the yeah, you definitely can't get anything out of a you know if you're trying to emulate a vector monitor with an lcd that's just not going to work at all but you you can run an lcd in an arcade machine uh i just me personally a lot of like the bend and flex of like just you'll, you'll play super mario brothers on something with an lcd and it's blocky it just looks yep. blocky and you can that's obviously the it's the scan lines that are you can add you can and you can add like 
filters re- and everything, there, and that helps. There but is a device. I'll link it in the description. There's yep. a device called a retro tank. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh a yeah, retro tank. Yeah. Thing, the thing is, it, this comes back to: is it worth it? It's like four hundred dollars. Right. So wouldn't I just go find another? CRT? Yeah. And, uh, that's, try, and that's just go find that curbside CRT arcade. and <laughs> put it, build it out, man. Yeah, it's cheaper to go the original route, but it's harder to find. Right. You know? And that's the that's the bend here, right? That's right. the flex. So um, it's just how much trouble you want to go through for whatever your level of authenticity, what it means to you. And, and, and again, I don't think you're wrong for putting in an LCD. I just think I'm wrong for putting yeah, one yeah, in. Yeah, so yeah. I do. I, I, I think uh, I think it really depends on the owner. And to Mike Murray's point, the average consumer, the 99 percent, and, and and obviously we're just trying to hit the majority here, folks. You know the 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 one percent or even less. I would imagine that yeah. would even say something. It, man, they're usually not really frequenting your arcade that much anyway. And uh, the million little kids that come in and their moms and their dads and they're just happy to see these games. Yep. They just want right. to play them. Yep. So that then that's that's a point toward emulation for that matter. That's a point toward. Uh, an LCD screen and these kids just want to play these games and these adults just want to play these games and uh, I'm I'm way closer to a purist than not but I certainly couldn't crap on a wonderful arcade that was full of LCDs you know because that and they're 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 going through enough trouble just keeping these 40 year old games going yeah. you well know again I, mean? I think it's it's about I mean in our last podcast and if you haven't listened to it you might <laughs> go back and do that first but it, and we talked about it's what kind of arcade a little are you late to, now yeah <laughs> what kind of arcade are you trying to build right right like, like if you're just building an arcade bar where people are going to come drink and the games are just there for decoration who cares right right, right. i agree <laughs> right. i agree uh i do like the i mean you know from this standpoint i'm i'm obviously going to be a little more biased toward the electric starship i love all the original stuff and i love learning about it i love just being entrenched in it and i learn something new every day i cannot tell you mm-hmm. The last time I went more than a week and a half without learning of a new game I'd never heard of. Yeah, uh, I'm and, the same way and, and all I, the time. And amazing. I will say that that's part of the the reason I come over here to this uh, arcade was because everything is original. It reminds me of when I was younger. I want to see that. I want to see those CRTs. I want to see that. But again, it wouldn't change. Told you I built this one. place for Roman. I told you. <laughs> I told you. You know, no. but and but to Mike's point, you know, I'm the guy that just drove ten hours to get a monitor. So <laughs> I, obviously, I CRTs love him for are it. Are brought me some monitor. He brought me a couple CRTs back so uh, and they'll go into some good projects yeah. there and then I just want to make one other statement I think you know for the home person who they buy a Pac-Man for example and, and, and let's hope they put a CRT in it <laughs> but they buy a Pac-Man at home and they want to put a 60 in one in it so they can play Pac-Man and Galaga and Donkey Kong and all these things on one cabinet I don't have a problem with that either. God bless them. Because that's that's a perfect thing to do in a home environment. Yeah, they're not going to have the space to put 40 arcades in their right, in their right. in their house. Here at the Starship or as an operator, I would think you'd want to put the original boards oh, and, definitely. You know, to uh, individual cabinets, but yeah. So we made a joke and it might have been on the last podcast cuz these things kind of run together for me, but we made a joke and I said, "Oh, we got arcade one up." Right? Mm-hmm. Um I think the arcade community kind of dumps on they do. arcade one they up do. a little bit, don't you think? Do you I think agree? They do. I, I think yeah. they do. But for the, I think they're. And uh, do you they're think the they're crap, Roman? No, I don't. Do you think they're crap? Absolutely not. So I don't either. I don't right? want them in my arcade. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but they're not for commercial I, use, folks. If I um, saw them in your game room, I think it was awesome. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, we get real nostalgic for those little tabletop Coleco arcade shaped yeah. little with L, with like little calculator LCD, LCD yeah. screens in them. <laughs> yeah. um, and we think that's the most amazing thing ever. But if Arcade One Up would have came out in 1984, 85, oh, it we'd been be good. ridiculously nostalgic for them. Absolutely. And they all have flat screens and they're all running emulation. <laughs> so my point is is uh, if you are enjoying arcade games, however you're doing it, God bless you. Because you're doing something Absolutely. that I love uh, and that Roman loves that Mike Murray right. loves. And I can't remember which city I was in. I, I travel for work. So I was in one city and I actually saw an entire arcade of arcade one-ups. I actually saw a news report from yep. like somewhere out of Louisiana that they had done right. arcade one-ups in, in a commercial setting. I don't know what the... I don't, I, don't, I don't know anything about legalities of that. I don't know anything about... 
Um, anything other than I think from a standpoint of these are commercial grade here and small people that are only a third of my weight can tear a nasty hole in it. Right? They can tear Absolutely. one of these commercial grade machines up. And I've seen arcade one-ups on display at like Best Buy and Walmart and they're rubbed clean of any paint yeah. around the joystick. And the, the artwork is like faded out. Yeah, totally. It's, it's gone. It's turned plastic. pure white. So I would say that that might be a, a rougher business model from a standpoint of long lasting. You know, if you set up yeah. something on in the a flip side, they're highly available and cheap. So you could just, right, them. just like, have a stock of them in the back <laughs> on shelves. Oh, they'd be all, like perfect flat on shelves. <laughs> Not like CRT monitors that you can't store for nothing right. anywhere. And you're stepping over them everywhere you go. Um, but yeah, that I would think that would be a rougher business model. To go by. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think commercial grade is, even though it was commercial grade for only six months, I think it's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. on the other hand, you know, if you don't have that much space and you're very limited, but you have that one want, there's a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cabinet out there oh, that's so a great. up and it's it's fun to play and it's <laughs> great to have. It's on an LCD, but it's okay. You know, it's, Absolutely. it's fun to play. Yeah, I mean... And, and, and really, at the end of the day, it's all about just having fun. It's about like, having fun. Are you fun. enjoying it? Are you having fun? If you're, if not, you're, you're having fun, <laughs> that's what it's about, man. I really do. I, I don't want to crap on anyone's fun, man. It does. I, I will say it does bother me, though, when I hear people, other people poo-pooing on other people's parties. Like, leave them alone. Let them yeah, alone. Just, you know? Whatever, man. <laughs> just be cool. That's what I say all the just time. Be just be cool. cool. You know, uh, I, I think... If I walked into someone's house and they had a whole arcade full of arcade one-ups, I would play in there just the same. And have fun. You know? Exactly. Uh, and uh, anyway, that's my two cents. Not yeah. that it's worth two cents. But <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast for an hour, it must be worth something. <laughs> Your time is money. It ain't worth much then either. So, uh, Anyhow, uh, any other uh, any closing statements on that? Where to get arcade games and how they're worth and you know, what kind of good deal and all that good stuff. I think that it just boils down to if you're into arcades and you want the real arcade, just be prepared to do work and upkeep on it. It's Absolutely. It's yeah. a hobby that's rewarding because it's going to give you that fun, but the parts wear out. You're going to have to yeah. fix things. Um, if you're going to rely on someone else to fix it for you, you're going to have to find those people because it's hard to find. Yeah, it's getting tougher that. every and day. You really sort of somewhat need to be a jack of all trades, right? Absolutely. Like, you're going to have to repair electronics. You're going to have to do woodworking. You might have to do artwork. I mean, there's all these different things that you have to do right. um, to, to restore and repair an arcade. And I would also say just get really good at spreading Bondo. <laughs> <laughs> Bondo. <laughs> Hope you like I mean, Bondo, son. <laughs> Let me talk about that for a minute because I hear people say all the time, you know, because, you know, Bondo has a really bad reputation in the car industry because yeah. these crack, you know, <laughs> crack mechanics will just right. Bondo anything in and paint over it and call it fixed, right. you know, and, and that's in the arcade world, you know. You, it's not a bad word in arcade. It's not a bad word. It's wood. Bondo is harder than the wood, stronger than the wood in most cases. <laughs> especially some of this wood. Yeah, yeah. So Jeez. especially if it's been water damaged oh, or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So a lot of times we will take a water damaged arcade and skim the side of it with Bondo just to, to make it flat and smooth again. Just, just, it's impossible to do it otherwise. But yeah, Bondo is a, is a great thing to use. Wood filler, some of the plastic wood and some of that. Sure. We use a lot of that. Wood hardener. Wood on. hardener. Oh, yeah. I use a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, yeah, don't when we are we are being serious when we say you should should learn how to use Bondo if you're gonna definitely repair. get a good respirator and some good sanding pads. And, and now look, sometimes I will if the if the damage is bad enough. I mean, I have I'll put a picture up here of my Gorf. I cut the entire bottom of my Gorf off like this much of it and built a whole brand a new bottom biscuit joiner. Or something I did a biscuit joint. Okay, I did cool. biscuit, absolutely. So that's a, <laughs> you nailed it. So I'm learning all kinds of terms. Yeah, so I, I just copied the construction that they had, put a whole brand new bottom on it, repainted it. I, I used well. I, I put the what do you call it the formica or whatever. Yep. Uh, laminate. Uh, laminate. The the laminate back over it. You'd never know that I added on to it unless you open the cabinet, look inside. But sometimes the damage is that when we had water damage. So right. Bad. Right. We wouldn't use Bondo in those. Cases. <laughs> no. Just bond the whole thing supported by Bondo. You'd be surprised how much I fix. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, I'll tell you what. But you're gonna get a cabinet. It's gonna have a hole drilled in it where they put a big lock bar on mm -hmm. it or something. Yep. You want to get rid of that, and the best way to do it is to fill that hole in with Bondo and. Yep. Just Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Anyway. 
Well, I love this, guys. This has been a lot of fun. And um, are there any arcade games? Just just on the way out, just a real quick. Are there any arcade games that someone should play this week? Do Do you have an example of something that maybe the maybe the listener hasn't played arcade in a while, like an old school arcade game or something from the eighties or nineties, or even a modern game? For all I care, I'm I'm not a real stickler for rules. If you haven't noticed, <laughs> uh, but uh, is there anything they should play this week? Anybody? I think um, I'm going to go with modern new school. Ooh, let's right? go. Because uh, I think this is very cool. But the Starship here has actually a custom-made Mortal Kombat 1 oh! cabinet. Oh! And Mortal if Kombat. if you haven't Pimping played that arcade, it is fantastic. Very so we well. took the the NetherRealm Studios WB game, Mortal Kombat 1, not the classic 1992 uh, Midway Mortal Kombat one uh we we took that game and mike's excellent woodwork and built a plan and sketch up and built a 50 inch screen mortal Kombat one huge and uh (laughs) people play it constantly it never Uh, gets a break so that game you know that's that's a fun funny that's a whole topic on youtube in itself if that game's trash you know that's Mm -hmm. not there i'll tell you what folks you put it in an arcade put it in an arcade machine and see how it does Mm -hmm. what that do is what i'm asking in arcade (laughs) it does a lot uh so obviously it's set to free so there's not having to coin it up and it's running on an xbox man it is great and we do have a youtube video for that as well the the build out of that which is pretty popular i'm gonna uh say that you should go play galaga and and, Ooh. Uh, yeah. And, oh, kicking it old but, school. But I'm going to challenge you to look up on the internet. I don't think people know this, but a lot of arcade machines have uh-huh. cheat codes. You know, like the up, little down, built left, in, right. little something, yeah. something. Well, there right. might be one for Galaga that makes it play a little different. So go check it out. I like that. There is. There is definitely a little something they can uh, look up and uh, maybe get a little further in Galaga, a little further than they ever did. Well, I am going to kick it old school as well. And I'm going to go with Williams Classic Robotron oh, 2084. Uh, Robotron. I did not grow up with this game. I did not know what I was missing until... I opened up this arcade and, you know, one of the games that was highly sought after was Robotron and we, we got one and I absolutely love it. I, um, you know, if I find a moment and I walk past that machine, it's very hard for me to not to stop and try to put a, a score on it. And um, Robotron has a very unique gameplay that a lot of arcades didn't have. You know, like you think of the joystick and the button, it's got two joy- um, joysticks and that it's just bad. <clears throat> yeah, Robotron is a dual joystick game you don't have to hit any button except for to start it if you're a one player two player and once you're going your left joystick is going to move your uh little guy around (laughs) little guy i don't know his name you're going to move him around the screen and the right joystick whatever direction you're pushing is going to fire and it's multi-directional uh you know eight way Mm -hmm. so So you can move one direction and fire the other you can be running backwards and shooting you know the other direction uh which is fantastic because you got to move and uh, it feels almost Tecmo bullish, if you will, because you're like cutting through different linemen and the things you can't shoot and, you know, going between things and there's blockers blocking things you need to shoot. And, uh, you're just trying to get extra lives and learning to stay off the sides of the screen, stay off the walls. Uh, so you don't get hit with the, uh, you know, little different Randoms. shots from, yeah, I, it's a, uh, it's a great game. Robotron 2084. Uh, yeah. so play it if you haven't. And if you, and if you can, which the tough part about that is actually finding you know, on a home platform, maybe a dual stick controller because you really want to play it with two sticks. You don't want to play it with buttons. That doesn't seem right to me. Um, This is, uh, you know, in in the 90s, we went with games like uh, um, Smash TV had Mm -hmm. the dual stick. That was actually two-player dual sticks. Four joysticks, if you will. Uh, but anyway, that's my suggestion if you haven't played that. So I think we'll close right there, gentlemen. I got one yeah. more thing. Oh, well, we if will not you, close right there. We're going if, to Mike Murray go. on the scene. Go on the scene. If you would like to be a guest Ooh. on our podcast, if you own an arcade or you're into the arcade oh, industry, such a good idea. Whatever. It doesn't matter if you're here local. I mean, we might fly you in or we might uh, do a Zoom uh, call. We could, we've done that before on other podcasts and not this podcast. But we'd love to have you, so shoot it at Mike at Electric Starship Arcade. Mike at Electric Starship Arcade. Dot com. Dot com. Send him an email, and we'll... Uh, I was trying to think of something for Roman. Mike, Hon- <laughs> Mike Honcho <laughs> at I Pose Nude and PlaygirlMagazine.com. And we'll see if we can uh, get you on the podcast. Love to have you. Awesome. Roman, any parting words? Uh, just 
you know, look for the arcade, get something, let us know what you get, post in the comments if you find anything or if you're looking for something. And, uh, you know, if, if I ever see anything out there and we're looking at it, we'd love to send messages back and forth. We're all a community. We're a big family out here. And if you think Mike Woods is crazy, put that in the comments. We'll agree with you. Uh, There'll be a lot of comments on that. And, and if you're building your own arcade or your own arcade at home and you need fine parts and stuff like that, put that in the comment too. We'd love to uh, tell you places where we buy stuff. Yeah, and uh, the Geek Pub, obviously, you know, for Team Olden Buttons and all that other fun stuff, build plans. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, until next time, folks, thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to these three guys talk about arcades yeah. Yeah, and arcade so machines much. and where to get them. So uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you in a couple weeks.